Hey guys, welcome back. This week we're going to be talking about safe and effective and affordable healthcare. So we have moved right along into getting all of those toxic ingredients out of our home. And today I'm gonna to share with you one of my favorite topics, which is redoing or making over your medicine cabinet, okay? So there are two things that we like to cover um, in this area. And the first is the modern approach, okay? So the modern approach is treating or managing the symptoms. And the natural approach, which we're gonna focus on today, is treating the root cause. So a good example of this would be an ear infection, which are very common in children. And the modern approach is to give antibiotics. So they're going to treat the infection and they're really not worried about the rest of the systems that go in place with that. Um, the natural approach would be to not give antibiotics, but to administer um, some natural remedies in the form of maybe some essential oils like basil. Um, we use some other homeopathic pellets, which I'm gonna share with you today to help um, decrease any of the bacteria in there naturally, um, using probiotics and that kind of thing. So we don't strip the ear of all the beneficial bacteria and set our children up for reoccurring ear infections. So there's definitely um, a, a, a nice little play that we can have between both of them. And we definitely use both of them in our home, but as we become more educated and comfortable with the effectiveness of essential oils and natural remedies, we really use the natural approach way more than we're going to be using the modern approach, which would be going to the doctor um, and taking the medicines that they describe. So I just want to go over a few of the natural remedies that I provided for you in this week's um, ebook and handouts and help you understand those a little bit more. Give you guys a few little tidbits on some accessories and things that are really helpful in preparing your natural medicine cabinet and then walk you through some of the protocols that I shared as well. So a few things that we like to have on hand, and I've got all my stuff down here, <laughs> uh, is coconut oil. So you're gonna wanna have coconut oil, especially if you're using kids, because coconut oil is a carrier oil and it helps the essential oils um, be absorbed through the skin, okay? So essential oils are uh, very light, they evaporate on the skin very easily, and coconut oil is a heavier oil, so it will help, help penetrate the skin and it will actually save you a lot of money because we want it to be affordable. So we're gonna use our uh, coconut oil. We're gonna use it in a roller ball and I'll share with you what's in this roller ball. This is a roller ball that we use for many different ailments and sicknesses in our home, but this is the way that you're gonna administer the natural remedies, okay? If you're not taking them internally. The other thing that's really helpful is to have a spray bottle, okay? So with kids, when we're talking about fevers, we want to help cool their bodies naturally, but we don't want to take away the fever. So a spray bottle comes in handy um, when you have children. The other thing that's really helpful to have on hand is these little droppers. Okay. And so all of this stuff I've gotten from a website called Share Oils. Um, if you guys are on my team, I talk about this website all the time. You guys have probably been there. But what's really cool about this is you can take out the dropper in your bottle. Okay. The little white thing that comes here and you can replace it with this dropper. So for example, I could take um, let's say this is lavender. I could take breathe and frankincense and add it to my lavender, put those little stickers on there, fill it up with some coconut oil. And now I have a remedy for chest congestion and I don't have to make a roller ball out of it. So it just really is up to how you want to create them in your home. Okay. So those are just some, some simple, um, tools that will really help you create your natural medicine cabinet. So I want to start with, um, fever reducers. Okay. Tylenol, Motrin for children. Um, what we're finding is that it can actually be pretty dangerous for little bodies because their livers are underdeveloped. So when we're giving or administering fever reducers, we are actually just managing the symptoms, which is the fever. And we really wanna look at the whole picture. Why does the body have a fever? It's probably because it has a virus. And what the body does is it heats itself up to cook the body um, of the virus to rid itself and when we intervene um, with something that's gonna take away that fever, we actually are gonna prolong the illness. And there are a lot of dangers in that when we're giving them to our kids. And I will share a reference, um, a book that explains this way better than I just did. But what we have found in our home is that we let the fever run its course. I call my oldest son Storm a cooker uh, because he literally gets 
super high fevers. He cooks it out and he actually recovers a little bit faster than my daughter who doesn't ha doesn't run such a high temperature. Uh, so some alternatives would be peppermint. So I talked about the spray bottle. You could take 10 drops of peppermint, fill it up with water, and you could literally just spray that, mitts that over your child's back, over their stomach, on their feet, and that will help them feel more comfortable if they have a really high fever. You can also use frankincense. Frankincense is a very good essential oil to use for fevers because it's very comforting and it helps support the immune system. It can cross the blood-brain barrier because the, the frankincense oil um, particles are very small, okay? So you can apply that up on the neck. Copaiba is also a really great essential oil to use. And then I wanted to share with you guys some uh, another option. So this is my little container where I keep our homeopathic pellets, okay? These are made by Boron. And you will see on here that they have a number. This is 30C. So this is high, highest diluted. Okay, so whenever you're purchasing them, you want to purchase 30C for kids. It means they're diluted the most. We actually will give this to them for high temperature. Okay, so they have different really weird names. The only thing that the, these are just plants. These are plants extracted and then they're put into these little pellets. My kids think that they're candy. So we will administer those as well. The next thing I wanted to talk about was uh, cold and flu, things like mucinex, um, cough syrup, um, things that are going to suppress coughing. There is nothing worse than having a little baby or being an adult <laughs> and experiencing it yourself, but having a little child that's just hacking and coughing throughout the night and you feel like you just want to give them something to help them sleep because they're so frustrated. And so a lot of times in the past we've turned to something like that. And not anymore because this stuff is capital yuck, okay? It's, it's only treating the symptoms. It is doing nothing to help your body heal. And that's a problem because you're going to have to take more of that instead of switching to a natural option and really helping your body heal quickly. So the first thing that I would do for something like cold and flu is to take essential oils internally. And that would be through veggie caps or the Ongar Plus soft gels that doTERRA offers. But here are some essential oils that are listed in your ebook that are going to be very helpful for um, a rollerball. So you would want to take oregano, melaleuca, on guard, lemon, and frankincense, and I do five drops of each, and that is actually what is in this rollerball. We probably I probably make three or four of these during the winter season of just those oils, and we'll change it up a little bit um, if I'm feeling like our body is um, needing something different but that is our go-to for prevention. Now, if you come down with the cold and flu, you can still use that. Um, the other thing that I would do on top of that is to start taking some elderberry syrup. And elderberry syrup that's bought in the store is a good option, but you're going to find that it's not gonna be as potent and strong and fresh as if you make it yourself. It's gonna be um, laced with sugar and it's gonna cost you a lot of money. So I encourage you to make your own elderberry syrup. It literally takes you 10 minutes. You can find the recipe for that on my website. You wanna take high doses of vitamin C and vitamin D. There is a ton of research and um, lots and lots of evidence that high doses of vitamin C and vitamin D support the immune system and can help with cold and flu. So those are some extra bonus tips. The last one I want to um, talk about is like a rash cream or like a steroid cream, okay? So this is one thing that you can just say goodbye to. If you have essential oils in your home or you're going to be using essential oils more, you are not going to need anything like that, all right? So I have shared a lot on how to make your own natural remedies with coconut oil, a little bit of cacao butter, and um, a little bit of um, beeswax. And you guys have had these products for <laughs> the beeswax maybe a few years because you only use a little bit of it. It is so affordable and you can customize it. I just whipped up a new one to um, use on my newborn, when my newborn's um, born. And that one had some essential oils in it that would be different if I made like a chest rub, okay? So if your baby has eczema, you could do um, maluca, frankincense, and lavender. Maybe your baby has asthma, or maybe you have asthma. You could do Breathe, which is a blend, or you could do lemon, peppermint, and maybe some eucalyptus. So you can customize it, and you don't have to use those, those harsh creams, okay? So be sure to take some time to look through the protocol page that I created for you guys. I would definitely print this out and keep it on hand. 
and to anything that you think your family is gonna come into contact with consistently, be sure to have those tools and those essential oils and those natural remedies on hand.